concentration because you're know, consuming, let's say here, you know, 300,000 kilowatt hour per year uh, because you have a fault is actually a lot of, you know, a waste uh, and a lot of money. So this information is actually pretty valuable too. And last but not least is the system actually can be integrated into third party SCADA, DCS or any other uh, central monitoring platforms where you can feed all the data from the system into your own HMIs. Now, before we look at the different solutions that we offer, basically we offer two main uh, solutions, online monitoring 24-7 and portable. But I'd like to dive into the technology first so that you understand how this works and then we go into its solutions and then look at them separately. These and this uh, the mechanical force on the driven equipment won't transmit to the motor side. So, but of course, uh, the ninety-five percent of the applications out there are typically, uh, you know, on transmission like this. So you will get to see the whole machine train, and you will get to monitor the machine train with this approach and. Again, by only using uh, electrical signature analysis, no sensors on the set, you know, no vibration sensor, no other sensors are needed. <coughs> and the fault detection accuracy with this approach is quite high because the system is very sensitive and it is keeping track of the trend changes. And this is very important. Not only it detects the existing faults when it's first installed, but it actually keeps monitoring the slightest changes in the spectrum and the vibrations basically uh, show themselves as additional frequencies so that the system will be able to keep track of them. And then you will get to see smallest uh, changes in the trend, of course, which translates into higher accuracy of fault detection on the system. And <clears throat> Additionally, the, the system actually doubled down, doubles down as actually a power meter. So you get to see all the power, monitoring data, active, reactive power, detail, harmonics of the system. So you get to see all the uh, information you get from a typical power meter. And additionally, this is also very important. Uh, when you have mechanical faults in your system, they will affect the energy efficiency uh, of the motor, right? So you they basically uh, you will consume more energy if you have a loose transmission, I mean belt or a bearing issue. What's going to happen is you will the system will try to make up for that fault by consuming more energy. So the system will provide you the energy efficiency effect of those faults. So when you plan for maintenance, not only you will look at the severity of the issues, but you should also take this information into consideration because you know, consuming, let's say here, you know, 300,000 kilowatt hour per year uh, because you have a fault is actually a lot of, you know, a waste uh, and a lot of money. So this information is actually pretty valuable too. And last but not this is the system actually can be integrated into third party SCADA, DCS, or any other uh, central monitoring platforms where you can feed all the data from the system into your own HMIs. Now, before we look at the different solutions that we offer, basically, we offer two main uh, solutions online monitoring 24 7 and portable. But I'd like to dive into the technology first so that you understand how this works. And then we go into its solutions and then look at them separately. So <clears throat> I've already mentioned that we name this technology model-based fault detection because we create a model of the motor, right? So we use system identification technique where we have a into the system. And the system and then the output is going to be, as you can see here, is the current. So now we look at, at this. Uh, imagine that you have uh, a perfect sine wave 
uh, supplied to the motor, which is the voltage sine wave, of course, we're talking about here. And if everything is fine with the motor or the whole machine train, you would expect to see a, a similar shape current waveform, of course, with a phase uh, angle uh, because of, of course, leading or lagging of the current and, and depending on the power factor of the system. But nonetheless, what you expect is a current waveform, a perfectly sinusoidal, no harmonics on it. Right. So this is, uh, in, in theory, this is what you expect. Now, of course, in practice, what happens here is when you supply this voltage, and, and we're looking at uh, the frequency domain here, you would see some harmonics right here. Uh, this Normally, you could think that this could be electrical harmonics, but they could also be mechanical harmonics too. And how we know that? Because I mean, you look at it here, they're not here. So now this suggests that then these additional harmonic, again, this, this is the frequency domain. So, and we're seeing these peaks over here. And the 50 hertz is, of course, our line frequency, so which is normal. What we want is actually, we want only see the 50 hertz of frequency domain here, and we don't want to see this. When they're present here, it would suggest that there is an issue uh, whether it's small or big, that of course have to be evaluated by looking at the amplitudes. Uh, but the frequency suggests that these are actually caused by the mechanical behavior of the rotating asset. So this is very important. So you have an input into your system. You're using the, we are using the current waveform as the output. Uh, and the motor itself is the sensor here, which essentially turns the voltage into the current. Now, <clears throat> what our system does here uh, with this approach now here, you have on, on the above side, you have the physical asset, which is your motor and whatever it's driving, could be a pump or fan or conveyor system or uh, anything again with, uh, with the electrical motor here. So, and we have a clean voltage signal, 50 Hertz, right? We supply that here. And that goes both into the physical asset, which is the motor again, and we create a digital tipping here. And this digital tipping creation actually takes seven to 10 days, right? So, and we'll come to that in a minute, but uh, why it would take, uh, you know, seven to 10 days. Uh, for now, just bear with me here. So the system is learning how the asset would, again, uh, behaving electrically and mechanically and creates a similar output which it sees from the motor itself right so we have 50 hertz here and we have these harmonics now the first order of business it is doing here it, it, it is trying to determine whether this motor has an issue to start with right you know if you apply this technology to a, a, a any motor with retrofit a, you know you would you would expect to see some sort of defects on, on the mechanical side. And if you think that this baseline that we start with is, is, is just good, then you will miss a lot of faults and, and then your assumptions will be wrong. So, and in order to overcome this, we are using a proprietary database that we have accumulated in the past 20, 25 years. So, and what we're doing is we're comparing these peaks with our database and then that gives you the first information whether this machine has any issues or not and then from then on uh, it goes into the monitor mode so and when it does that it starts comparing the actual measurements from the motor with the model that it has created and constantly taking the difference between the two so now, what happens here is that you end up with a residual uh, current waveform distortions, as we call it. But this is basically the difference what's happening now and what was supposed to happen or what was learned before. So the digital TV. So imagine a scenario where you install this into an asset and a pump 
and then all of a sudden you started to you know see some additional peaks here because of uh you know some seal uh you know uh, wear or seal issues or you have bearings or coupling misalignment on your so all of these mechanical faults would create additional uh, distortions at a different frequency uh dependent of the fault type so those will add themselves here and since the model is already created it is taking the difference between the two and then you end up with these newly introduced uh, peaks here and we analyze this on the power spectral density which is basically a more stable version of an FFT I'm sure you're familiar with the FFT it is a signal processing technique that you're using to analyze the different frequencies uh, on the A50. And we are doing this on a power spectral density. Again, this is a more stable version of that. Uh, and by looking at the frequencies and the amplitudes, we're providing the information, whether this is actually a misalignment or unbalance or bearing or gearbox issue or uh, or impeller so all that can be seen here now if we didn't have any input right we didn't use the voltage as an input uh, you know for a second just imagine a scenario you're seeing these and we're just purely looking at the output you know and this is the most common approach in other techniques you know vibration being the most dominant one you know you would see a speaks here but when you don't have the input, you might associate this uh, additional uh, base uh, uh, with an ankle fault. But when in fact, as you can see here, it's coming from the supply side. So this is actually an electrical issue. So may your mains or your VFD or your transformer might actually introduce additional harmonics on the electrical side. and that will affect the performance of the motor, not only electrically, but mechanically, and it will vibrate the, the system. You know, uh, One example I can give is, let's say you have a high voltage imbalance or again, harmonics on your supply voltage. What is going to happen? It will stress uh, the stator and then heat up the motor. And then over time, that will yield to insulation degradation and also decrease the lifetime of the motors. So, and this is actually an electrical problem, but not a mechanical one. So, and therefore having this voltage input will again uh, be very important and the system will be able to, I mean, the system is smart enough to separate the electrical faults from the mechanical fault. So you will end up with zero residual current waveform distortion. So then it will tell you this is an electrical problem, but not a mechanical one. So you focus on the electrical side and then you can go into detail sections in the system to, uh, again, see what the problem is and where is it coming from. You can trend all the different electrical values there. Now, I meant also mention in the beginning that we're doing a process monitoring as well. Not exactly process monitoring, but the process change detection because within that seven to 10 day period, we learn how the system behaves. So if a condition is not learned, you get to see actually the, the variations or the deviations from the model. So then you can actually have a look at it and then correct if it's an issue or if it's a newly introduced process, you can update the system to learn that new condition. So this is important. Now, and, <clears throat> One additional thing uh, here is we get this question a lot. So how the electrical signal can see mechanical faults, right? So in order to understand that, we have to understand how the motor works, right? So uh, in order to get the motor you know, up and running, you have to supply a three phase voltage to it, which will induce an electromagnetic field uh, to the stator, and that, that will start turning the rotor, right? So there's an air gap here between the rotor and stator, and there's also a slip in the induction motors, uh, non-synchronous. So 
then the rotor will start turning and then that will of course cause a current control. So now when you have a mechanical problem, what is happening is the mechanical problem but distort the air gap here, right? So you will, it will create a, a dynamic or static uh, eccentricity on the shaft, which will then affect, of course, the rotor, and then the the uniformity of the electromagnetic field in the air gap will be distorted. And those distortions will happen at frequencies based on the root cause of the fault, right? So if you have an unbalance, that's going to be a one-time rotating speed in the frequency domain as sidebands to the carrier frequency, which is 50 hertz. So that is essentially how the mechanical vibrations will translate into the electrical signature. In this case, of course, is going to be the current signature analysis. So the currents will be affected, and that's how you are going to see uh, <clears throat> the mechanical faults on the electrical signal. Now, I mentioned that it takes seven to 10 days to learn the motor. Right. And actually, when you compare this to other, you know, artificial intelligence or machine learning techniques, it's actually a pretty short time. Normally, you would actually have to supply a lot of data for six months to a year before you create some sort of baseline. With this approach, you do that in seven to 10 days. Uh, and, and you have the model created. But more importantly, that model also provides, again, the existing false informations. Um, it does not assume that the motor is just running perfectly fine. Now, during that seven to 10 day uh, learning period, the system creates clusters for each of the operational profile or the condition. So, and these clusters will contain its own set of thresholds. Now, when it's monitoring the asset, it will compare that condition with the closest cluster that it has created for. So this is important so that you have the resolution here so you, you get to compare apples to apples. And one example I would like to give here is that let's say you have a VFD driven uh, motor now and it's running at you know at a higher speed at, let's say at 70 hertz instead of 50 and you have an unbalance. Now what's going to happen that unbalanced force will be much higher when compared to its normal operation at 50 hertz, right? So if you're looking at this with, you know, other techniques, you will, you will think that the imbalance is very severe, but when in fact it might not be at 50 hertz. So this system will compare that imbalance, the, the one at 70 hertz with the 70 and the one at 50 hertz with the 50 hertz cluster that it has created for. And when I say hertz, it's not only the speed that is taken into consideration here, but we're looking at the motor load, motor speed, and the care, I mean, the gain of the system. So this is a three-dimensional uh, uh, model in here. So you have, cre you're creating clusters for each of those conditions. And these are the variables in the motor condition, of course. You know, what is changing is most of the time is actually the load and the frequency. Right? So, and therefore the system creates these uh, different clusters. And of course, you see here three clusters, but we're creating hundreds of clusters per, you know, per model. And if, again, a condition was not present during that learn, you can update it later on, which then, uh, you know, the system will then add new clusters for, and then it will learn. So this is how the system, uh, does this uh, seven to 10 day digital TV creation. Now, one other thing I'd like to mention here is the frequency of the data capture, right? In any online system now, especially the vibration, if it's wireless, so, you know, you, you get maybe, you know, one or twice uh, or three times a day. And, and also, uh, it is not, you know, high resolution data. So this system is taking a 10 kilohertz waveform and the length of the waveform is six seconds. 
every minute. So you, you collect data for every minute. We call these iterations. And this is a tangular sample signal, both on the voltage as well as the current waveform. So you have six channel, 10 kilohertz, every minute at six second length waveform data. So this is a lot of data uh, collected per day. So you have uh, a greater resolution and a greater frequency of data collection. And that gives you, of course, all the trend information you need, both on the electrical side, as well as on the mechanical side, when a fault uh, develops or started to develop. <clears throat> all right, so now, now I'm going to actually look at the, the solutions that we have. I'll start with the online one, which is the EMCM, and that is the online motor condition monitoring system. So this system provides you know, automated fault diagnosis, early fault detection, remote monitoring, comprehensive which we have already covered. And, and of course, being able to monitor uh, the rotating asset purely from the MCC panel with the electrical signals makes it the only viable solution for hard to reach applications, you know, cooling tower fans or submersible pumps where installing any other type of sensors is, is, is limited or not possible. This will, you know, uh, make it possible to monitor those assets. And of course, it also provides again, energy efficiency effects of the phones. So what do you see from the system? You know, it has different layers, you know, it starts from uh, as in, uh, the simple layers where uh, first you get to see whether there's a problem or not on, let's say you're monitoring, you know, 100 assets uh, at a time. And here it will tell you automatically whether there's a problem or not. And then you will only focus those assets with problems, right? So, and one you know, this is, of course, a common dashboard you would see in other monitoring platforms. And then you, you set your own thresholds and everything, and then you get an alarm, which is red or yellow. Here, it's a little bit different. Okay, What is different here is that you don't have to set anything, any thresholds. The system will do it automatically for you, and it will let you know there's a mechanical problem. It will let you know there's an electrical problem. Electrical problems will be yellow, as you can see here. Mechanical ones will be red. If it's green, it's running fine. And you don't have to intervene. You don't have to input any data. So you don't have to set any thresholds. So this is very important. And here you see there's two different actual dashboards or softwares over cloud as well as on prem. So that's why you are seeing two screens, but they are essentially providing the same information here. Now, on the cloud, again, you, you see all the power information, power factors, you know, total hours, active, reactive, power consumption, detailed, again, live electrical data, you know, basically anything you see from a power meter, you will get to see here live on the system. Now, going back to that automatic fault detection, let's say the system identified that, you know, two out of 20 pumps that you're monitoring you know, have an issue, right? So what do you do now? You go into that pump, or in this case, a ventilator. You select that, and you look at here, and then you can, you get to see a home page of that, that asset. Each equipment will have its own dashboards, its, its own model created for it. So you will get to see where you started and what's going on now. So in this example, you can see that you know, this was learned in 2015, and then this is the data from next year, 2016. So nothing has changed within a one-year period in this machine. But if it was, what you would have seen here is, let's say, it started to develop a bearing fault, right? So you would see that second bar graphs will start to go up, right? And this, this machine didn't do that. It only had a loose foundation to start with. So, and, and it hasn't changed within one year. So it also shows you the existing fault, right? It's not necessarily a fault yet, but it's there, so it is. And this green line is the 
normal average accepted uh, level. So our system starts with the existing old information, as you can see here, a little bit of loose foundation, a little bit of pairing, but nothing has increased yet. So if it was, again, you would have seen the change. And then, uh, of course, the nice thing about this is it, it tells you where to look at now, right? It says, yeah, you have a bearing issue. And let's say you have a bearing issue. So what do you do now? You go into this uh, spectrum analysis, both on the cloud or on the on-prem version. So, you know, on any asset, you know, you have minimum of uh, four bearings, right? So, and the system told you that you have a bearing fault. You go into the advanced analysis section here. You select bearing. You, know, you can just, uh, there's a 35,000 uh, bearing database in the software. If it's not there, you can add your own bearings too. Uh, and then you select the bearing number, right? So, and when you do that, you can plot the uh, inner race, outer race, ball spin frequencies of the bearing. And then when you see a match on the spectrum here, this is the blue spectrum, which is the learn model. And then you can say, this is the pump bearing or this is the motor bearing. So you can actually go into greater details. So you start with the you know, first information. There's a problem on this motor. It's mechanical. And then the bar graphs tell you, you know, look at the bearings or misalignment, and then they come to the spectrum, and then you can do your advanced analysis to find out, you know, where the problem is. And you can also trend the Yeah. Or how severe the bar graph section. So, and on the trend section, you can also, of course, trend the mechanical folds together with the electrical ones. You know, sometimes. You have to look at the load changes, you know, how that affects the system and, and you know, uh, the frequency as well as uh, harmonics. You know, some mechanical faults can be triggered by the electrical input. So, and this is nice uh, here on a trend section, you can trend everything all together. I mean, there's a lot of parameters that you can trend. So, and the system will also provide automatic energy efficiency, again, effects of the faults. An example here, it says, you know, you have a fault with that causing you uh, almost 11,000 kilowatt hour per year. So, of course, depending on the size of the motor. Uh, so, when you take a corrective action, you will prevent that energy waste and then save money to your basically system. And on top of this, additionally, in the system, we provide. Uh, Detailed diagnostic reports, if needed, and these diagnostic report is prepared by you know experts uh, on our thesis and by our distributors. But of course, the goal of the system is make our customers or users self-sustainable, right? So you rely on the software; it tells you automatically what to look at, and with a little bit of uh, you know training on the spectrum side, you can actually detect the problems on your own without needing any external support from our thesis, of course, but if needed, we do provide that. And <clears throat> so we talked about the electrical and mechanical fault detection and everything, and this actually concerns both electrical and mechanical departments. But then uh, since it's an online system, you know, you have to sort of understand how this would fit into any plant, right? So how does the installation process, you know, works and then where is the data stored and all that? So this, you know, slide will sort of give you that idea. So you have your, you know, assets on your MCC panels or substations. So each asset would require one hardware. And then from there, you connect to a switch in your substations. Then you take that information to basically your server. So we have the on-prem software you can install into your server. And then there's a client version of the software so you can install into multiple 
locations or PCs in the same plan. Or if you prefer, you can send the data directly from the MCCs to the cloud without actually using your own network. And, and then in that case, you don't have to install any softwares. You just you know, log in into a cloud software online and then start monitoring your asset. And all the installation and commissioning, uh, I mean, the commissioning of the, of the assets will be then performed remotely and, and you don't have to deal with those. And by using the OPC, you can send all the data to uh, you know, uh, other platforms that are using the OPC. So, uh, and we also have an API on the web software. So you can also use that to fit data from the web version to your web-based platforms. <clears throat> so, and then how does the hardware installation look, work uh, or look like? And how, you know, how long does it take? So it actually takes approximately 10 minutes, right? So uh, you install the uh, physical hardware, which is a DIN rail uh, product right here, right? You can see, and then you have the Sorry. So you have the voltage connections coming here, as you can see on the red section, uh, and this is also parallel to the voltage, of course. So you don't have to uh, worry about the, you know, uh, <clears throat> being an intrusive installation. So, and the CTs you can see here, they're they are also non-intrusive. So these are split core CTs that are going around the cables. So you open them up, just connect them then, and then uh, feed that data into the device. So all you need is three-phase voltage and three-phase current. And then from there, you actually use uh, uh, a TCP IP connection here. They use a CAT 5 x cable to connect that to either a router or a switch in your substations. And then you're done. So that's all that it, that it takes to install the system. Uh, and you might wonder, of course, if this is applicable to medium voltage systems. The answer is yes. So there's no limitation here, uh, either voltage or, or power size. So it, it is applicable to all uh, types of motors with uh, different you know, voltage levels or power levels. And if it's a medium voltage system, all these installations, the voltage and, and current connections are made from the secondary side of the potential transformers and current transformers. Yeah, let's say you have a 6.6 6 .6 kilovolt motor. So we tap into the secondary side of the PT, which is 100, 110 volt. That goes into our hardware. And, and then we also tap into the medium voltage uh, CTs. So we connect to the secondary 5 amp or 1 amp outputs to get the current. And the, the low voltage side is uh, you can connect up to 690 volts so the device can get 690 volt directly. Anything above, we have to use the existing PTs and CTs to get the voltage and current from the water. And again, one more time here, it's it's very good and, and e easy solution for hard to reach applications, submersible cooling tower or anything in an ATEX zone. So, uh, it makes it uh, possible to monitor those, uh, which is not possible with the other methods. So this is pretty much it with the online system. And um, <clears throat> and here you can see there are different types of installations that I already talked about. There's a one case study I just I'd like to share with you with the EMCM. I mean, we do have a lot of case studies. We can do a follow up, uh, you know, and share with you guys. But uh, just quickly here, uh, in this example, you, you see that the EMCM installed in 2021 January, and it, uh, so and it detected existing issues already, uh, which is this was an actually a, a ID fan. This is a this is a wood mill in the U.S. Uh, from the date of main so initially they start with four units you can see that uh, it detects actually a, a, a misalignment on the transmission which was actually a direct couple to the fan 
and it was it was pressing the bearing, so it's it's actually makes sense. So and then this data it's barely visible, but it's actually April twenty seventh of two thousand, so it's three months later, approximately. So electrical uh, parameters have increased here, and the external is higher. So this suggests that there is an issue on the incoming line. It could be the cabling, or if it could be the terminal box, or uh, the uh, connection points. And then we trended that parameter here. You can see how quickly it actually started to increase. So the user went in and they checked the cabling, and then one of the three uh, phases cables, you know, it started to corrode, and it was making some arc. So, and that's you know. They fixed that, of course, and then you can see the trend went, went back down to normal levels. So uh, this is an electrical case, but it's an easy one to, but it actually, uh, you know, with other techniques, it's very difficult to detect because this is a, a, a change from the learn model. So the system is identifying as an external cause and you were able to fix uh, the issue before actually it got more severe. So the second solution that we offer is portable one, right? The first one, the online applies to critical assets where you want to have 24-7 monitoring and then also benefit from the machine learning that it does and keep, again, track of the trend changes so you can prevent the energy waste as well as, of course, unplanned downtimes, which could be costly depending on the criticality of the asset. Here, we're looking at a, a portable solution which takes a, a seven minute snapshot uh, test and then tells you what's going on at that point of time so that you get to see if there's a problem or not on that asset. And then of course, by doing rods with this portable unit, you can actually compare, of course, the test to each other and then you can create your own trends as well and uh, with these routes. So, and then of course you can test as many more as you have. So it doesn't have to be permanently installed on asset, right? So, uh, and it is the same technology applicable to the same type of motors. Uh, so it can generate immediate uh, incident assessment reports right after the test is completed. Of course, that's the nice thing about it, right? So you get a report saying that you have a problem or not, if there's a problem, where that problem is. And it's providing you all the electrical information too. Uh, and of course, there is no process change detection here because it's actually not doing that at seven to 10 day learn. So it's only electrical and mechanical. That's the one difference between the online and portable version. Uh, and here, uh, what is nice about this product, it also comes with a cloud integration as well as this uh, optional uh, AR plug, which I'm going to mention in a bit. So this is what you get from the incident assessment report. You can see that there's only one bar graph here, which is giving again one condition only. So if you want to have a second bar graph, you can compare two reports to each other. So you can do before and after, uh, you know, comparison for two report comparison to each other. So you will then get the second report. So, and in this example, again, you see that there's a transmission and those foundation. So. And you have the electrical energy efficiency effects of the faults also, of course, are provided here. And then you have the electrical performance of the asset. So you have voltage currents, uh, detailed uh, uh, RMS values, uh, in, in voltage current imbalance, harmonics, uh, torque, crest factor, as well as the raw waveform that you, you, you can see. And this is also uh, accessible during the test. So during that seven minute test, what you can do actually is you can you can look at the live electrical values when you do the test you can do your analysis there and then when the test is completed you get the average of those values reported to you in this uh, report and you have the spectrum again and this is this is where you can select your bearings and then calculate your again the uh, BPFO or BPFI or BSF or FDF frequency bearings you can do the same thing with belt gearbox as well as you can put a number of uh, fan blades or impeller vanes to calculate the vein pass simpler you know uh, blade pass frequencies so that you can see a match and then you can say this is an issue on the pump or fan 
and you can report, you know, if you create a PDF report and send it to, uh, from the device to anyone you like, it has an email integration embedded to it. And normally you do the test with the, uh, the current props that are coming with the device. It is an adjustable prop with uh, three levels, starting from 10 amp to goes up to uh, 600 amp. Uh, but if you want to do routes without shutting down the motor and just especially for medium voltage systems, you can do a permanent install of this air plug you're seeing here. And, and, and of course, you'll have the CTs installed and the voltage is connected similar to an EMCM installation, but it's less, a lot less uh, inexpensive here. Uh, uh, so in this uh, air plug installation, and this also shorts the uh, CTs over here. And then what you do is you go with the uh, uh, with the main plug you see here, and then just connect and do your routes, and then we be, be done with a seven minute test. So this is safe and UL certified and everything. So it and there's a lot that comes with that plug. So you, you know when it when it not used, you will have it locked so that nobody can touch it. And this this is the lock over here. You can see. And the cloud integration takes this, uh, you know, up to another level. So normally you have the AMT Pro on site, you know, somebody is going around and doing the routes and then doing the test. And of course, doing all of those tests with, with from the MCC panels. So you don't have to be near to the equipment. And then you can sync everything into the cloud, which again, you'll have an access here. And you, you will get to see what's going on from you know hundreds of different assets that you have tested you can see what faults are most common you know all the statistics and then you can see how many tests performed per equipment but more importantly you can actually train the test per equipment so let's say you have you know as you can see here there's seven tests performed from this equipment so you can see the trend right so it had a consistent unbalanced transmission and Two of seven, it had bearings at a high level. So, and you can also train them from here, and you can view the report from here too. So, which is very convenient, of course. And you can do uh, all of your uh, spectrum analysis again from here. You can do report comparisons and look at the, again all the reports and, and export it to PDF if you like. So, if you have multiple AMT pros on your plant, you can assign different users for different uh, you know, devices. And then the managers sitting at the top, you can see everything. And then you can assign individual users and then limit what they see maybe for their department. So all of that hierarchical structure is available on the cloud. But more importantly is, again, you send someone to do the collection of the data and test just sync and, and then uh, the analyst maybe can sit on the uh, on the computer and just look at the data and then see again uh, you know which asset that you should focus on again the nice thing about the portable approach is you don't need to analyze the data to understand whether there's a problem you will only look at the data if the system said there is a problem so that saves you a lot of again uh, time and you know labor intensive analysis process. So a quick case here from the AMT, you can see that there, there's a report on a pump here to automatically. It said that there's an unbalanced transmission and driven equipment. So the bar graph on the mission actually has some driven equipment uh, information too. So it suggests that there's a, actually an issue on the pump because this is a direct couple. So there's actually no transmission. Anyway, right. So now, of course, the user when they replaced the and they detected there was an issue actually on the uh, pump bearings. So they replaced the bearings. You can see that it's actually damaged already. So they put the bearings. Happen here is the bear and the transmission for the, the pump part uh, went down, which suggests that yeah, the problem on the pump side is solved, but there's still this misalignment issue here. So, you know, this is the root cause of the problem. So if you don't fix this, it's going to, the problem will repeat itself and you will have another bearing failure within six to nine months time. So uh, you can use this uh, again to see 
actually uh, the problem is not completely or there's still remaining issues on the system. All right, so we are actually at the end of the presentation. What we look at here is that with this approach, using the online and portable version, you actually reduce your operational expenditures. You don't have to, again, analyze the data and collect the data from different assets. The, uh, and you will reduce your unplanned downtimes. And since you do not have to access you know, difficult applications, it will also help on the safety side and it will improve the process uh, or safety improvements there. So uh, now we are to the Q&A session. So if there are questions, we'll try to take them and answer them one by one. Mr. Oh, sorry. Okay, thanks for uh, presentation, Mr. Kumai. There are some questions for the participants. Double. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's already uh, explained by you. Uh, question from Arif Ujono. Is there uh, any automatic analysis inside? It's like, uh, is it winding problem, bearing problem, or rotor problem if the problem happens and uh, it will a notification about the problem? Sure, yes, there is a... So, I mean, I already showed that there's an automatic analysis. I, you know, the bar graphs shows you that, yes, you have a problem. It's a, you know, a broken rotor bar or rotor issue or bearing. But the also software will, when configured, will send you autom automatic email notification. You know, on the software, you go there, you put your, you know, email addresses and everything, and then you select which fault parameters that you want to be notified for, and then it will send you that automatic email notifications as well. Okay, thank you. Another question from Pak Inda Abdullah. Uh, is there a difference? Uh, what's the difference from EMCM product with a previous MCM product? Because they already installed the MCM or All right. Maybe the product. question. So, I mean, uh, I think the the number. I mean, the biggest difference is the sampling uh, frequency, right? It it has, of course, the hardware is much more up to date and then uh, powerful processor and everything. But and also the, the communication interface is now. You don't need a converter. You know, previously MCM had a. Uh, converter need to convert the RS4222 to TCP IP. So EMCM has all that. It comes with a touch screen. It does power monitoring uh, live. So, and and also it does 10 kilohertz sampling versus 2.5 before. So you get a higher uh, PSD length. It goes up to five kilohertz and also higher resolution. So, uh, there's a four times greater resolution on the new EMCM versus the previous MCM. So you get to see some early bearing faults or status slots or higher, you know, wane pass frequencies at the high frequency and the high resolution will give you, uh, you know, faults, uh, a, a greater accuracy on the rotor bar issues as well as on the slow uh, rotating machines. So uh, these are the main differences between EMCM and MCM. Okay, thanks. Maybe uh, another, another question, question is: uh, Can we find? Uh, can, can we analyze which the bearing have a problem if there are uh, some type of bearing on the motor and arm something like that? Is it could we distinguish where is the the bearing, uh, the defect. On the okay, equipment. so one thing I'm going to say here is that uh, if all the bearings are identical, both on the motor and pump, 
it's going to be difficult, right? So it's, if they're identical, they will create the same four frequencies. Uh, the, the only... Uh, the only time that you can actually separate the pump bearing from the motor bearing, and I'm talking about, again, the case where you have identical four bearings on the system. If the pump speed is different than the motor speed, then you will be able to detect that because on the spectrum, you can actually select the uh, load or driven equipment speeds, then you will calculate different fault frequencies for that bearing, even if it's identical to the motor bearing, because the speed will affect the fault frequencies. So that's the only time you won't be able to separate those. But if the bearings have different, I mean, bearings are different and they have different bearing numbers, then on the software, on both AMT as well as EMCM software, AES, you select the bearing there and then you calculate. I mean, you, you don't have to calculate, of course, the software will calculate for you. You just select the bearing number and then plot the fault frequencies. And then it, you will see those newly plotted frequencies. They're matching, uh, you know, which ones are the match, you know, for the bearing selected. If it's the pump bearing, then you will say it's the pump, uh, you know, bearing that is causing the issue. And not only you will say it's pump, but you can say, it's the auto race or inner race or ball spin frequency or FDF or the cage frequency of that bearing. So you can go into that much detail uh, from the advanced analysis section. It's uh, very clear, but uh, I see many. Ariza Sukmana, uh, how to determine the recommendation related with the lifetime of the, uh, lifetime of the equipment? Uh, is it uh, like if the next three months or next uh, six months? How the uh, MCM? Oh, okay, uh, you're you're uh, talking about how much lifetime. you know remaining use Basically. lifetime of the component, right? So how much how much time you have left before the motor is gonna shut down? Unexpectedly, yeah. is that the question? Yes, but yes. Okay, so I mean, whoever is telling you that. They can tell you that information is a lie. We're not telling anyone that it's three months, six months. What we can tell you is you know, with the online system, right? Since it, it does the modeling and everything, you can look at the trends and then from your own experience or interaction with that asset, with the MCM, you can determine, you know, maybe a, a year or two years later because you have experienced that failure and then you can see the standard deviations and and how much, how quickly that develops. But we can tell you that it's um, it's one month or six months or nine months. But what we are saying on the bar graphs, you know, if you see something on the caution, you you keep uh, you know uh, track of the uh, trend levels if it's increasing or not, and if it comes to the red zone. You know, you go have a look at the equipment, but we're not saying that it's one month away from the failure or three months away. So that's, and again, with your own interaction for your own asset with the MCM trends and bar graphs, uh, you will probably be a better judge of yourself again down the line when you use the product for maybe two or three years, because then you no, again, yeah, this is what, what happens here. And this is when it failed from our own experience type of thing. But no one can tell you exactly when it's going to fail or how much time you have left. Uh, but as a general rule, when it comes to the red zone, yeah, we're saying that, take a look at this. OK, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Tumai. Uh, there are questions also from uh, in the Abdullah. Uh, he already have uh, anom alert in their site. Uh, many equipment okay. already installed with that. Is it possible yeah. to upgrade to uh, EMCM? And, and uh, what kind of upgrade that uh, they should uh, prepare? Okay. Is it uh, hardware or uh, software also, or or what? No, it's it's actually a complete hardware and software uh, upgrade. So what I'm gonna tell about anom alert here is the anom alert. Of course, it was not handled directly by Artesis and as everybody knows, by Bentley Nevada. And this, to be honest, the support was not 
as good as you can get from Arquesis. So, and the software versions probably you're using there is very old. So, I mean, it, uh, I'm sure you're using 1.3 or something like that, but we are at 2.3, which is, uh, you know, six, seven years old already. So you, you need, I mean, the software upgrade is free, of course. You need to get the latest software, uh, that's for sure. And uh, I would also recommend to upgrade from, uh, you know, hardware upgrade to uh, most likely CTs too. Now there's, there was a question about between Anomalert and uh, EM, EMCM, I mean the MCM and EMCM. One other qu the difference was we actually made a universal hardware. So you don't need different versions and you also don't need the LEM sensors, which were, I mean, they were very expensive for VFD driven systems. So now we are using split core CTs. Uh, and so the overall cost with EMCM for VFT machines actually uh, is significantly less. Uh, so uh, for again, for this question, I would recommend to definitely upgrade the software as hardware. well as the hardware to EMCM because you will get a higher sampling and you will get the power meter. So there's a lot of new features into the EMCM, which is not available on the anomaly side. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, and one, other, one, I think, since, of course, the, I mean, you're using the anomaly there, of course, it's a commercial thing, but we will apply different pricing structure because you are already using, so you're not going to pay the full price to get the EMCM, but there will be an upgrade fee to, to make you switch from that too. So I think... Uh, we do that with all our existing customers, even though, you know, we haven't dealt directly with, but this has, hasn't been anything about Amler. You know, we treat them as our customers, so we will provide uh, a different pricing uh, for EMCM upgrades here. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, another question is, uh, could we define where is the face failure? Uh, R, S, or T phase if, if we found an anomaly on the cable performance or unbalanced current with the device? Sure, of course. You can trend all the, I mean, not only you get the raw waveform data at 10 kilohertz, you know, you, you, you can look at the waveforms and then see, but you also get the trend uh, RMS values and then you can see which one is, you know, high in amplitude and which is, which one has the High voltage imbalance. That's that's very easy to see. Okay, uh, I think that's all the uh, question for today uh, webinar. Sure, it's a lot of most of the participants uh, interested in this. Uh, Uh, material and uh, terima kasih bapak-bapak yang sudah uh, join di webinar ini uh, mungkin beberapa minggu lagi kita juga akan mengadakan webinar dengan uh, topik yang lain uh, silahkan update di uh, uh, sosial media kami baik itu Twitter maupun uh, LinkedIn dan untuk update-update dari kita kita akan sampaikan melalui uh, sosial media kita dan uh, teman-teman yang kenal dengan bapak-bapak biasanya kita suka share juga uh, melalui status-status WhatsApp dan uh, uh, status sosial media kita juga. Oke, okay, uh, thank you very much uh, Mr. Tumai for your time. Uh, sure. It's very helpful for us to have... Uh, it's, it's my pleasure. Thank uh, you for arranging this. And technology uh, with uh, maybe previously... Uh, haven't implemented in some of our customer that uh, it should be it could be uh, suitable for specific equipment and many equipment in our customer okay, thank you again and uh, terima kasih juga untuk para sobat tiara yang telah hadir hari ini okay uh, and see you again and bye-bye bye thank you bye.